Hello everyone, dear Makita friends, and a warm welcome to this new video. It's great to have you back with us. As you can easily see, today we're talking about a Makita lawnmower once again. I know there are quite a few of them, but today it's not just any lawnmower in front of us. It's the smallest battery-powered lawnmower from Makita, specifically the new DLM 330. In this video, we'll explore what this little mini battery-powered lawnmower has to offer, who should consider buying it, or whether it might be seen more as a toy. That's exactly what we aim to find out together in this video. So let's not waste any more time, and we'll jump right into the video after the intro. But if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. You can find the current prices for this good piece as usual in the video description below. And now, let's get started after the intro. The well-known and previously most compact battery-powered lawnmower from Makita, the DLM382. Yes, times are changing because this model is no longer the most compact in the lineup. The market now has an even smaller and more compact model, the Makita DLM330. A 330mm battery-powered lawnmower powered by just an 18-volt battery, and it comes with a 30-liter grass catcher at the back. Honestly, that doesn't sound like much, but I would say let's wait and see what this compact 18-volt battery-powered lawnmower from Makita has to offer. I suggest that we start with the contents of the new DLM330 first. As you can see, the product box itself hasn't changed much. We still have a large image of the lawnmower on the front center, two features highlighted here, and additional lawnmower specifications on the right. We'll take a closer look at those details later, so let's proceed with the contents. Let's see what's really inside the product box. Honestly, regarding the contents, I don't expect any major changes here, as I assume it'll be very similar to the other two Makita battery-powered lawnmowers, the DLM382 and the DLM432. Nevertheless, let's take a detailed look at the contents to see what you actually get with this battery-powered lawnmower. First and foremost, on the left side of the box, we find a small Ziploc bag with all the small accessories, just like we're familiar with from the other two Makita battery-powered lawnmowers. What do we have here? First, a small wrench, the two wing nuts, two screws, two clamping levers, and also the safety key, which is essential for activating the lawnmower. Next, in the middle, we find the super small grass catcher, including the user manual and conformity declaration, also available in multiple languages. Following that is the handle of the battery-powered lawnmower, and directly beneath it, the handlebar, which, as you can see, also needs to be assembled. Finally, in the product box, protected by bubble wrap, we have the actual battery-powered lawnmower, the small DLM330. And that's it for the contents of the new DLM330. Honestly, for me personally, this part looks more like a small lowered toy race car. But of course, an important element is missing here, and that's the handlebar. We'll also quickly assemble that now. The assembly itself is, as expected, really straightforward. This means we now need all the small accessories, such as the two wing nuts and the two clamping levers, and we begin by mounting the lower handlebar on the lawnmower using the two handlebars. For that, we find a small recess on the battery-powered lawnmower on both the left and right sides. The direction is entirely irrelevant in this case, which means we insert the two handlebars into the lawnmower and they visibly snap into place on their own. To secure them, as mentioned earlier, we also have two of these small clamping levers included in the package. It's quite easy, simply screw them into the designated hole and secure them by tightening. Next up is the upper handlebar. For this, we need the two small wing nuts and the two small screws. Fit them onto the lower handlebar, one on the right and one on the left, each having a small recess. On the upper handlebar, however, you find three small holes, allowing you to adjust the handlebar to your body height, more or less. I'd say let's go for the middle hole. This means align the handlebar accordingly, then pass the small screw through from the outside, and last but not least, tighten it with the nut from the inside. And of course, repeat the entire procedure on the other side. 
And with that, the handlebar of the battery-powered lawnmower is now also assembled. What we can now do to prevent the cable from wobbling aimlessly on the side is to attach this small plastic clip that's also included. Simply thread the cable through it, attach it to the handlebar, and as you can see, it provides a bit more stability for the cable. Now all that's left is the grass catcher. Next, attach the grass catcher to the lawnmower, which is also super easy. And last but not least, don't forget this little red safety key, and the lawnmower is ready for use. And now, in my opinion, it's time to take a closer look at the smallest member of the Makita family, the DLM-330. For better visualization, right next to it, we have the larger version of Makita, the 36-volt variant of the DLM-382. I've also thoroughly tested and introduced this lawnmower before. If you haven't seen that video yet, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I'll link it up here on the info card for you. In terms of appearance, these two lawnmowers, in my opinion, are quite different. For me, this one somehow looks more like a small mini sports car than a lawnmower. I don't know why I always have this image in mind. If you see it in the same way, feel free to write it in the comments below. But otherwise, we naturally have the typical high-quality Makita craftsmanship here. This means the unit certainly gives off a robust and solid impression. But I must say, in a direct comparison with this model here, this lawnmower appears to be even more robust than the DLM-330. As you can see, it's surrounded by the typical plastic casing. The DLM-330 is actually entirely made of plastic on the outside, specifically polypropylene, which, in my opinion, gives it a nice, robust, and high-quality appearance, and, of course, ensures that the lawnmower is relatively lightweight. With the battery, the DLM-330 weighs around 12 kilograms, which, in my opinion, is definitely manageable and not too heavy. Connected to this, we find a generously sized handle right in the center on the top, making it possible to lift the lawnmower easily and transport it for short distances. In terms of size, I must say it's entirely sufficient. That means it's easy to grip the handle securely and reliably. However, I must note that on the top it has a smooth finish, while from the bottom it's somewhat sharp-edged in my opinion. But this design is suitable for lifting and transporting. For short distances, this should be entirely adequate. Right in front of it, you can see the battery compartment protective cover, also made of transparent plastic, allowing us to essentially see inside the lawnmower. Up here, there's also a small 330mm sticker, which I'll talk about in a moment. To open this cover, there's a small push button at the top, which unlocks the cover, allowing us to change and replace the battery if needed. As I mentioned earlier, there's this small push button on the top, which allows you to unlock and open the cover. Right in front of it, there's a small recess for your fingers to grip, which, in my opinion, is also quite convenient. And finally, the cover is positioned or oriented in such a way that it naturally closes on its own. It doesn't remain open, which has the advantage that the cover is securely closed even when you're not around, preventing grass from entering the battery compartment. The 18-volt battery is inserted from the top into the battery compartment, and in red, right next to it, there's the crucial safety key. It's essentially a bridge for the two contacts. If this key isn't inserted, we can't activate the lawnmower. So insert the key and the lawnmower is ready for use. By the way, while we're at the battery compartment, the little DLM-330 also has a battery status indicator. Since we only have one battery here, we only need one LED, just like in the DLM-382. The DLM-330 has two LEDs. Here on the right side, we have an LED that signals when the battery's running low. In my opinion, it's positioned quite well because it's directly in the user's line of sight. This means that when I push the lawnmower and the LED blinks, it's within my field of vision and I can immediately see when the battery is running low and the performance is decreasing as a result. Moving on to the left side of the lawnmower, we have the cutting height adjustment. As you can see, in this case, it's made of metal, which of course gives it a higher quality appearance and greater durability compared to plastic. And I must say, from a handling perspective, the cutting height adjustment is really well done in my opinion. It's super easy and smooth, and the knob at the top is very comfortable, meaning it's really well executed in that regard. 
Furthermore, as you can see, we have a total of 8 settings, allowing us to choose different cutting heights from 20 to 75 millimeters, so it covers a wide range. What slightly bothers me about this cutting height adjustment is the labeling. We only have markings 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 8. How am I supposed to know exactly what cutting height level 7 corresponds to? So, I have to calculate it. In my opinion, it would be much simpler if instead of numbers, they directly labeled the cutting heights in millimeters. But nevertheless, in the grand scheme of things, it's really just nitpicking. The next point we'll take a closer look at with this small mini lawnmower is the installed wheels. In my last videos, I praised the DLM 382 and 432 to the skies because they have rubberized wheels and are additionally equipped with ball bearings. Unfortunately, I have to take a step back with this model because we have pure plastic wheels here, no rubber and no ball bearings. This means that this lawnmower is very loud when I push it over paved surfaces and the like. Secondly, these wheels don't necessarily last long. The ride quality here is probably not as good as with ball bearings, but I would say that will also be evident in the test later. Regarding the diameter, we have relatively large wheels here, in my opinion, with 140 millimeters in the front and 180 millimeters in the rear. But as I mentioned, neither rubberized nor bearing mounted. I would say let's continue on the underside of the mini lawnmower, so I'll turn it upside down for a moment. This is what it looks like from below, the little DLM 330. In this regard, it's also quite clear to see how the plastic wheels are simply placed on the metal axles, no ball bearings or the like, so it's really straightforward in this regard. But what I'm interested in is the heart of the cordless lawnmower, namely the built-in motor, as well as the blade. For this, it should be noted that the little DLM 330, like the other cordless lawnmowers from Makita, at least the smaller models, has a regular brush motor, and as the name already suggests, DLM 330, it has a 330mm cutting width, a 330mm blade, so not much. The device is mainly suitable for small gardens. In my opinion, the entire chassis construction on the mower deck is quite positive in this regard. Makita has optimized it significantly because if we take a closer look, we don't have any large edges, corners or the like where you'd need a screwdriver or something similar to pop out the grass. Here, the entire mower deck is super smooth from below, so a quick brush and the lawnmower is pretty much clean, although I would recommend not spraying it directly with a water hose here. By the way, some of you may have already noticed on the underside, if we look into the discharge chute of the small cordless lawnmower here at the back, you'll see nothing. Because the mulching plug is still inside, which comes with the DLM 330, which will probably please many users. For the DLM 382 and 432, there's also a mulching plug available, but not included in the package as an optional accessory. Therefore, it's even more pleasing that this small model comes with a mulching plug included. I find the installation somewhat unusual though. On the back of the mulching plug, there's a large handle, making it comfortable to insert and remove the mulching plug. However, when removing the mulching plug, it can be quite unyieldy. For those who say, I don't need a mulching plug, they can certainly use the included Makita grass catcher. This one has a total capacity of around 30 liters, which is not the largest, but entirely sufficient for this small lawnmower. Additionally, on the top, you'll find a small fill level indicator that's open during normal operation and signals when the grass catcher is full. The installation of the grass catcher works logically the same as with any other lawnmower. Open the cover, hook in the grass catcher, and let the cover close automatically through the tension spring, which usually works smoothly in most cases. But not always, as occasionally it happens that you might hang the grass catcher a couple of millimeters to the side, and the cover, as seen, no longer closes automatically. In such cases, you need to intervene manually, wiggle it slightly to ensure the cover locks securely. In my opinion, there is a little room for improvement here. What else is there to say? Of course, crucial to the cordless lawnmower is the handle. In this regard, I must say not much has changed, meaning we still have a very comfortable and non-slip handle, just like in the previous models. It features a slightly foamed material that's very non-slip, ensuring a comfortable and secure grip. What's noticeable is that the handle is quite narrow, but that's also due to the lawnmower's narrow design. 
To give you an idea, it has a width of approximately 350 millimeters, which I personally don't find uncomfortable. The same goes for the handle's height. As shown earlier, this lawnmower offers three different height settings, so you can easily adjust it to a lower or higher position, allowing you to reduce or raise the handle. I must say, for my height, around 1.83 to 1.85 meters, it's entirely sufficient and also very comfortable. Let me measure it quickly. In the middle position, the handle stands at about 100 centimeters high. Lastly, let's discuss the important controls of the cordless lawnmower. Here too, there haven't been any changes. Still, in red, you can see the lever for activating the lawnmower, and crucially, in the bottom right corner, there's this small red button, the release button, which allows you to activate the cordless lawnmower. So far, so good. We've now taken a detailed look at the new super compact DLM 330. One thing just crossed my mind at this point that I definitely want to mention. Even this lawnmower can be easily and compactly stored just like the others. Here's a quick demonstration. On top goes the grass catcher. Then you fold the handle forward and fold it in the middle. This gives you a super compact storage size, making it easy to stow the lawnmower during the winter. In this sense, I'd say it's now time for the test. So sit back, let's begin with the practical test and see what this little unit can really do. Let's find out what this mini mower is truly capable of. To provide maximum power, I'm using a large 18 volt battery with 5 ampere hours. I've of course fully charged it beforehand, so we can accurately assess the lawnmower's actual power consumption. By the way, the lawnmower's blade is brand new and sharp for optimal cutting performance. I started by mowing a typical lawn area of nearly 400 square meters. The grass is mostly dense and currently about 75 millimeters high, and it was cut to about 40 millimeters. In terms of handling, I must say that due to its low weight and despite the lack of ball bearings, the lawnmower surprisingly pushes quite comfortably. This also results in high maneuverability, which is particularly positive for smaller areas. It means quick turns and curves are easily manageable. And even with a full grass catcher, you don't really feel a significant difference. However, this also comes with the disadvantage that the grass catcher is full after just two passes. So, at this grass height, a third pass definitely wouldn't fit. This means that for even small or medium-sized lawns with tall grass, the grass catcher needs to be regularly emptied because a total volume of 30 liters simply is not much. Additionally, the narrow cutting width of only 330 millimeters means that smaller passages or narrow areas can be easily navigated. On the other hand, for larger areas, you'll have to cover quite a few lanes before the entire area is mowed. In my case, I had to go back and forth several times with the small DLM 330 and empty the grass catcher to cover the entire area. After about 20 to 25 minutes, I'd completed mowing the entire area. Surprisingly, the battery still showed a remaining capacity of 2 out of 4 bars, so it's definitely not bad for the entire area. Next, I pushed it to the extreme and sent the DLM 330 into the toughest test. I attempted to mow approximately 90 centimeter tall, thick, matted grass on the highest setting. For this, I naturally used a new fully charged battery to provide maximum power. I also decided to skip the grass catcher since I would have to empty it every 2 meters. Regarding performance, I must say the little 18 volt lawnmower struggled significantly in the extreme test. The short grass blades up to about 40 centimeters posed no major problem, but as the grass height increased, there was a noticeable drop in performance. At times, I was actually waiting for the overload protection to kick in, but surprisingly, it didn't happen during my test. Nevertheless, I must say that the extreme test was definitely a bit too much for this small cordless lawnmower. It was meant to illustrate what the lawnmower is capable of at its maximum. All in all, it could be said that the small 18 volt lawnmower, the DLM 330, is not a bad choice for very small gardens. The device is super light and mobile, making it easy to handle, but it's definitely underpowered for larger areas. 
Moreover, in my opinion, you should consider whether it might be better to go for the more powerful 36 volt model, the DLM382. What do you think about this topic and what's your opinion on this new 18 volt cordless lawnmower? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please show your support with a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. You can find the current prices as usual in the video description below. Thank you so much for your support and until next time, take care. Goodbye.